Hey guys and welcome back to part 2 of our own 7 second display clock fitness timer uh, whatever you like to call it. So like we discussed last week uh, taking us through the 3D print and the housing in this design or this time we're going to take you through the LEDs how to connect them, how to build them into this and then also I'll show you guys the code and just the functionality of it and how it works. So if that sounds good to you guys uh, you're going to the right place as you can see my hair is still going strong um, so I think we've got another three weeks of this so I'm excited to see where it goes it kind of goes like March Simpson just up I'm trying so kind of getting a mullet as well um, yeah so if you're just here for the hair, hair update you can leave now <laughs> if you want to learn more about the seven second display stay tuned enjoy this is the bottom of the seven second display counter as you can see, I've got some WS2182Bs and I actually have some WS2183B um, as you can see the black and white. So the difference you'll see the white actually has four contacts. 5 volts, D in, bi-directional in and ground. So what these white LEDs actually does is if I lose one of my lines on D in, D out, my B, B O, B I is like a backup. Um, so if I lose one LED, the stream will still carry on. Where with the WS2182B, I only have one line. So let's say this LED fails, then the whole stream will be off. And I will only have I will only have light until that LED, the one before, the one that was failed. So what, what is nice is these two can work with one another. As you can see, I did not take the backup route. So I only did D out to D in. So how this works is I've got my ground, my 5 volts, and my uh, D in and D out, my data in, data out. So I start here, this is my input side from the ESP32, I'll show you guys the connection of the ESP32 soon, and as you can see I just made it green my D in, black my ground, and red my uh, 5 volts. So input here, and you can see I go down here, then this becomes D out, that goes to D in, 5 volts ground, and this keeps going, D in, D out, D in, D out, D in, D out. So what I did was I went there, up here, up here, and then piggybacked, <laughs> well not piggybacked, a daisy chain to the next uh, number. So as you can see, I only have one line, and this one line actually controls all these LEDs. So that's pretty cool about these LEDs. I only need one pin from my ESP32 or Arduino, and I'll be able to control all these lights. I must say, um, it does give kind of problems at when you go more than 33 LEDs, um, then you just have to be sure about your timing and not have too many things running in the background. And so I just carry on here, inside here, all the way. Then these two LEDs are my second counters. So when you normally have a clock, there's normally two LEDs in the middle that will blink as it goes. And then it goes next and just carries on like this. So technically speaking, or theoretically speaking, I can keep going like this to about a thousand LEDs which is pretty cool so if I wanted to I can just add another one here on the side so the wires here um, 5 volts D out ground and then continue this chain so that is how I connected it guys um, just advice try to keep it color coded like I mentioned in my previous video so keep one color your D in D out data line Keep one color your ground and one color your red. It's just easy to keep track. And yes, so here you can see the mess that is my ESP32. Um, so for the LED, it's always good practice to keep a 100 ohm resistor in series. It protects the LED from ESD and all that stuff. It just makes it more stable. Uh, for this example or this uh, design, I used pin 27 for my DN. And then you can see on the right hand side, we created a button si button system button. <laughs> that sounds funny, button, button system to navigate through some sections, make it up, down, uh, up counter, down counter, AMRAP, all change the settings. So this is version one. Before we try to get fans with apps, we thought, okay, let's just have buttons and play around with it. So you can see I've got my black. So black is always ground. Red is always my voltage and blue is a signal. So I've got three signals that's going to my ESP32. So when I push this button, a high signal will go to my ESP32. In this example, I've got 18, 23, 19 as my input pins. We'll go through the code as well. And then you can see I've got my red. So in this scenario, my red is 3 volts and not 5 volts. So this pin here is 3v3, 3.3 volts. 
the reason for that is the ESP32 takes a 3.3 volt input and it cannot handle a 5 volt. And then you can see I've got these funny resistors building a pyramid. This is so that I can have a pull down resistor. Uh, you don't want your buttons to float, so you want to control a state that is always known. So when the button is not pushed, it will be ground, it will be a zero. When I push the button, it will become a one, it will become 3.3 volts. And so this resistors, I've just got 10 Ks here, they're called pull down resistors to ground. As you can see at the bottom here, my blue and the resistor is actually the same. I'll show a circuit of how it actually looks right here. So that's my ESP32. Very simple, 5 volts to the LEDs, 3V3 volts to the buttons, pull down resistor, ground to stabilize the button. Uh, you never want your button to be floating. You always want to know what state it is. Is it zero? Is it one? You don't want to guess. And then my blue is my signals, my digital inputs going to the ESP32 to know exactly which button I'm pushing and what the program is going to do with, recording, with regards to that. And then we always made, also made this nice box where the ESP32 and buttons will go, so we can just switch, push the buttons. Uh, very handy to have a 3D printer. And this is what goes on top of our LEDs. As you can see, I've got some two different 3D prints here. I've got one that is um, just a solid color gray, and I've got one that's quite transparent. So these ones are going to let the light shine through, and we made it a bit higher so it will block the light. So if I've got light shining here, it won't escape and go light some other place where we don't want any light. So and you see it is screwed together by 2.5 millimeter screws and some nuts <laughs> before I forget the name. And that's how it's kept together. So this will just go on top. Um, or this will actually go on top of there and then you screw in here with 2.5 millimeters as well. And then it goes it fits quite nicely, nice and snug and then we can have it light. So let's build it quickly. So here you can see the back of it. I've got 2.5 millimeter screws and I just tighten the back on it of the cover to the top. You can see I only did diagonals but there are four holes. Um, this is the middle one with two. And then I've got these two little brackets that will stand on. Um, so very easy to put together. Just close the back and start screwing the screws. Um, the 3D print does have standoffs uh, that you can just screw into. So let's turn around and see if it works. Yeah, you can see the top side. Um, yeah, yeah, I've just left out the, the transparent 3D prints just so you can see the LEDs. So the LEDs are in this gap. So wherever you set transparent, that is where the LEDs is. You can actually see them through. So this might actually be two trans transparent filament, but it works quite nice. Um, so let's see. You saw that flash there, that's when I plug it in my USB to power it. And then there might be some noise on the data line and the light's gone. So I made this little box on the right hand side. As you can see, so if I push a button, it should count up. And there you see, so it starts going four, five, six. So this is seconds and minutes. And you can see some flashing here. That is just due to some something in the program. Like I mentioned, the 33rd LED is not always nice. So that you can do things like disabling interrupts. Uh, we are still playing around to make this the best it can be. Um, you can change colors. As you can see, this is red. This example actually is um, you work for 30 seconds and then you rest for 10 seconds. So if I push the button again, you can see I start working, working out, doing push-ups, doing sit-ups, you name it, for 20 seconds and then I rest for 10 seconds. So the red is um, movement and then the blue is just rest. It's just to show that different colors can be used in this design. See if it works. That's pretty cool. So the next step now is just to take the code and make the buttons navigate through up, down. Um, this is called a Tabata. So Tabata is normally you work and you rest. And then we look at MRAPs. We're also going to add another one on the side here so that we can count the amount of rounds. As you can see, you can just keep adding LEDs. Yeah, you can see our version 1 of the 7 second display functional fit timer. As you can see, we made a functionality to go down or up. You can see down the W is quite strange in 7 segments, but that's a W. So down, up. So let's say I want to count down. Let's push the OK button. And then I choose the working, my working time. So I want to work for 
uh, let's say 40, 35 seconds. You can see I can increase it with the buttons here. Minutes, I'll make zero. And then this is my rest time. So sometimes you want to work for a certain amount of time or, and rest. So yeah, I can make it zero. If I go all the way down. Zero. So now, now I want to choose a minute rest, also zero. And now it will wait for me to push the button to start. And I'll start. So we'll go from 30, 34, 32, all the way to zero. And then your time will be up. So you can make the minutes up to about one hour max. Then it's done. And then we'll, you can choose up. So I just want to count up. And I want it to stop after 50 seconds or a minute. So let's make it 1 minute 40. Or well, let's make it 3 minutes 40. I don't want to rest at all. And then I'll start. And we'll count up. This blue LED is just LED that got damaged <laughs> during uh, building of it, so it's not part of the code. So when you guys do it, it should not be like that. And that's it. And that's it done. So sometimes you can see the LEDs flash a little bit. Um, that is because there's two different libraries on the ESP32 that you can use for the WS21 LEDs. Uh, the fast LED or the NeoPixel LEDs. So this is the NeoPixel library. Um, it might be worthwhile playing with the fast LED library to see if you can improve it. Uh, I think on our next revision we'll probably move to the fast LED to see how that is. But that is the basics of it. Um, now you can do up, down, choose your rest time, choose your work time and have fun while exercising at home. So that's it. That is our version 1 of our 7 segment, seven segment display functional fitness timer. So counting up, counting down and yeah that's it. So we're going to share this code on GitHub with you guys. So you guys can build it, take the code as you want, alter it how you need it. Let us know down below what other functions you think we should add. We'll think about adding more Bluetooth functionality, Wi-Fi, because ESP32 is capable of doing all those things. Um, but yeah, I think it's a nice solid base to start with, uh, easy to understand, easy to build yourself. So let us know how it goes, you're trying to build yourself, and let us know if you need any help. Um, you can message us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Guys, have a fantastic day, fantastic weekend, week, wherever you are in the world. Stay safe, stay healthy. Until next time, guys. Bye.